Hello, and welcome to Recalibrating. My name is Callum, also known as Wanderlutes, and this is the second entry of Recalibrating, entitled The Path of Self-Actualization, Burnout Recovery from the Ground Up. This entry was published on July 1st, 2023. One month ago, I gave my resignation. Yesterday was my last day. I resigned from the intellectual property law firm I have worked at since 2016. Many people have asked me, what am I doing next? Which firm am I going to? Which company have I joined? The answer? Nothing. None of them. The response to my answer has been mixed. Some people are confused, unable to contemplate stepping out into the unknown, into the realm of uncertainty, without an employment plan in mind. Others are supportive, recognizing the value in taking a step back to recalibrate before moving on to the next phase. One comment in particular has seemed to resonate with people in both camps, that I am burnt out. Burnout. Burnout can be sneaky, slowly building up until it takes over everything all at once, shrouding my brain in fog and skewing my view of the past, present, and future. Burnout can make it hard to care, introducing apathy towards many things, stifling change and making it hard to break away. It can also be hard to recover from. I realized that for me to recover from burnout, I needed to do something I haven't done for years, truly rest. I have taken vacations, but my level of depletion from burnout is such that vacation does not seem to recharge me back to 100%. I need more time, more rest, more purpose. The Burnout Recovery Pyramid. To help, I have been going to therapy. During therapy, I was shown this Burnout Recovery Pyramid, modeled on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. More on that later. The more burnt out you are, the further down the pyramid you should start in order to begin the recovery process. It makes sense. If you are slightly burnt out, reconnecting with things you once enjoyed can engage and pull you out of burnout. However, if you are completely fried, odds are that you have let other areas in life slip, including physical and mental health. In this scenario, it's best to start at the bottom. Given that my burnout phase has lasted well over a year, I recognized that this is where I needed to start. The recovery pyramid graphic. The graphic begins with physical resourcing, recharging the body. This involves replenishing the body with sleep, nutritious food, natural light, movement, and physiological grounding, such as breathing techniques. The steps to be taken during this period are outsourcing responsibility through delegation or abdication, focusing on minimizing output and meeting the basic needs of Maslow's hierarchy. The second level of the pyramid is mental resourcing, recharging the mind. This is time for self-reflection, mindfulness, and internal resourcing. This involves minimal resumption of duties, predominantly through management, and focusing on rebuilding the psychological and mental resources. The third tier of the pyramid is reconnection taking time to re-establish positive and fulfilling connections, connecting with and expanding external resources. This involves resumption of duties with a focus on balance, engagement in a restorative relationship building. And finally, we get to the top of the pyramid, turn. This is active problem solving with a focus on sustainable practices. This involves a full resumption of responsibilities with a focus on building processes to ensure sustainable progress focus on supportive processes and awareness. For me, starting at the bottom has meant letting go of the life I had built, one of stability and financial comfort with my job. Over time, I have realized that my values did not align with this life, leading to a dissonance that both drained and anchored me from being able to initiate change, to grow. To truly recalibrate and begin again, I realized that I would benefit from a complete situation change, or situations wetzel, as my friend Julia would say. Changing environments is one of the best ways to alter habits. By resigning, I was enabling a true habit rebuild from the ground up. I figured that this shift in perspective might be the best way to assess where I am at and which direction I should head next. As I talked about in my first entry, which is linked here, my goal is to recalibrate my habits and lifestyle to improve my path of self-actualization. I will be doing recalibration with the recovery pyramid in mind, 
shifting my perspective away from working for others and towards self-employment and self-expression through creation. But before we go there, I want to take a step back and address the question, what is self-actualization? Self-actualization. When I think of self-actualization, I think about doing what I am truly meant to do, being the best version of myself. I also think of the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, one of the best known theories of motivation. To understand the top, it is helpful to start at the beginning, build from the ground up. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The hierarchy is shaped like a pyramid, with each layer smaller than the previous layer, building on top of each other. Note that I have provided a very high level overview here. I've included links to more detailed resources in the article. Starting from the bottom of the pyramid, we have the first basic needs. Physiological needs. Food, water, warmth, rest. We then move to the second layer, which are safety needs, security and safety, both physical and financial. The third layer is the first psychological need, belongingness and love needs. This is intimate relationships, friends, family, community. The fourth layer is the second psychological need, esteem needs, prestige and a feeling of accomplishment. This involves both internal esteem and external esteem, which I'll get into more in another entry. Finally, we get to the top of the pyramid, the self-fulfillment needs. This is self-actualization, achieving one's full potential, including creative and cognitive activities. So the first two layers are the basic needs, physiological and safety. If these are not met, there is a feeling of deficiency. I also think that the lack of these needs generally leads to a decline in mental health due to the regular anxiety of trying to meet them. The third and fourth layers are the psychological needs, social and esteem. If these layers are not met, there is an inability to grow, to change. I think stagnation can lead to a decline in mental health as we try to grow but are unable to. There is a feeling of being lost, of not knowing where to go next in life. Being lost and constantly questioning direction in life can also lead to anxiety and inability to properly rest. Lacking these needs leads to deficiency, slowly moving backwards. Next, we arrive at the peak of the pyramid, self-actualization. When self-actualization is reached, people tend to care less about what others think of them as they pursue their full potential. The desire to achieve self-actualization leads to self-awareness as they try to be the best version of themselves. This is the growth phase, the phase that truly enables us to feel consistently complete as we step into our natural selves, who we are meant to be. The expanded hierarchy of needs. Over the years, Maslow expanded his hierarchy to include a few more layers of the pyramid. Prior to self-actualization, there are cognitive needs, knowledge, curiosity, and exploration, and aesthetic needs, appreciation and search for beauty. These needs go towards what I consider self-exploration and self-expression. Meeting the deficiency needs allows for a foundation of growth towards self-actualization. At the top, there is transcendence, going beyond the self. I understand transcendence to be a state of being that arises from consistent self-actualization, of maintaining one's path. In other words, self-actualization is not a goal to achieve, but is a way of being. A journey, not the destination. Looking at the expanded hierarchy of needs, the pyramid now goes like this. Starting from the bottom, we have the deficiency needs. Physiological needs, safety needs, belonging and love needs, esteem needs. Now we move to the growth needs, which are cognitive needs, aesthetic needs, self-actualization, and transcendence. However, additional research has shown that even if the basic needs are met, to be happy, a person may still need self-actualization and social needs. I personally think that self-expression is one of the best ways to maintain the pursuit of self-actualization. This self-expression can be done purely for one's own sake or can be shared with others as a form of communication and bonding, aka social needs. I also think that the lack of self-expression can lead to a deficiency in multiple areas of the pyramid, though of course that will depend on the person. What's next? Recalibrating is my way of assessing where I am at on the journey of self-actualization. By reflecting regularly on this path, I hope to more quickly recognize when I am straying off course. 
I regularly reflect through different practices, including mindfulness, journaling, and creating art. For more information on mindfulness, I have a mindfulness introduction guide on my website at www.wanderludes.com mindfulness. To see some of my favorite artistic creations, I recommend checking out my first collection, Begin Again, which can also be found on my website. My hope is that by recalibrating my habits, both physical and mental, I can maintain the path of self-actualization and avoid burning out again. Stay tuned. Note, for more detail on Maslow's hierarchy, I've included several links at the end of my newsletter entry. I hope that you enjoyed this second entry of recalibrating, giving an overview of what self-actualization is and how I plan to recalibrate my life to achieve this self-actualization. If you found this helpful, I would really appreciate if you would consider subscribing to my podcast and newsletter and sharing this entry with a friend who you think may find this helpful. Word of mouth is by far the best way for me to build my audience and meaningfully engage with other people on the internet. So if you're able to share this message with anyone else who may be struggling with burnout or is looking to make a change in their life, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.